Hi. Hello. Jack and Jack. J and G, the Jacks. Yes, ma'am. What's your preferred? They all work. They all work, either one. What's but your preferred? I'm going to go with J and G. I like that. That's I what our friends call I call him Galinsk with no Y. I just leave the Y. Galinsk. Yeah. I call him Johnson. I don't know why. I'm just Johnson. Johnny boy. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there's so many variables. Who knows which one I might throw at you? Those we got to be ready. Calls. We're ready for whatever. Out. So we just saw the video for Distraction which is, of course, off the Gone EP, which is brand new from you guys. Yes, they were ma'am. dancing behind stage. Clearly, good to know, big fans of your own music. Smooth moves. They're amazing, yes. Um, so tell us a little bit about the EP. Five songs, what's the story? So the story is, I mean, the songs, honestly, we didn't make them uh, with the whole idea of this conceptual project in mind. They honestly were five of the songs that we had made over the past year and a half, two years. Um, that we really liked and felt like they kind of told the story, you know? And then we realized Two Cigarettes was the last one we made, which is mm-hmm. the final song. And that was like the missing piece. We're cool. like, we need, the, we need the song that... Uh, I got to tell... Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, I was going to say like all the songs, <laughs> all but Two Cigarettes came together before we had the idea of the conceptual project. Okay. And then we had Distraction, Fallen, Last Thing, and Hurt People. And we just like, realized like... We need to tell the truth here. the story, you know? Yeah, like we need, we need like a, a song that, that really ends the relationship, you know, and rounds out the whole con- conceptual project yeah. as a whole. And we felt like that's how, like, 99% of relationships you go through in life end up, you know, is, is on a, like, you know, a ending, you know, mm-hmm. except for that one, of course, where you get yeah. married. Yeah, and depending if you have 100 relationships. Exactly, then yeah. Then you're right, 99% exactly. of relationships would uh-huh. end like that. Yeah, I don't know who's having 100, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. So, uh, basically, we, we, f- we found this project to have, like, a song that anybody can relate to at any point in the relationship, mm-hmm. whether it's the beginning butterflies, whether they're going through heartbreak, you know, we felt like um, it was something that everybody could pull something from and get inspired from, you know. So talk me through the story. So the whole thing, if you go onto your YouTube channel, it's 19 minutes long, mm-hmm. and it's like a little mini movie. Yeah. And they are quite linked. And there is some like reoccurring motifs and stuff of you guys falling. Oh, yeah. So what's the story behind it from start to finish? Um, so the story behind the video, start to finish, is Jack and I. It, what's really cool about this video, actually, is that everybody who's in the video was from Nebraska. All the extras, our love interests, everyone even, except for the director. And yeah, Jack even and the I. crew. Like we I mean, had we're people, from Nebraska, actually. Yeah, we actually are from Nebraska. No, but like the crew, we had like obviously people who are in charge of like the camera, whatever, yeah. you know. So like. Literally everybody who was a part Brad, of it was from the Nebraska. The PAs, the actors, yes. coordinators. Yeah. And it just made it that much more special to Jack and I, I think. Um, was that intentional, though? Were you, like, really yeah. home sourcing? Totally intentional. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we could have easily shot all these five videos probably in less time than it took to shoot them all in Nebraska and Los Angeles, you know? But we thought it would be more authentic and kind of, like, tell more of a story of who we are, regardless of what this story of the conceptual project is. Yeah, man. And I video. feel like so many so many people just be, like, throwing supermodels in their videos and stuff these days. And, like, yeah. we're like, yo, let's just find some like homegrown girls from Nebraska that just you know yeah. like fit like the typical girl in Nebraska growing yeah. up and so most just, people don't go to high school with like you know supermodels so you gotta you gotta find just like people yeah there's only that, one Gigi it's, Hadid it's true. she goes to one high school there you yeah, go exactly mm-hmm. but I think it just fantastic. it really just made it more uh, kind of rootsy the whole video in general and the story just like of course like you said there's the recurring moments that go yeah. throughout it uh, yeah. it's really cool because every single video has like you know either foreshadowing or or something that you had already seen uh, before and so I think uh, it's really cool how they're all interconnected. And you can find like little recurring moments, like you said, throughout these So the story so. is going into a relationship and then it's slowly falling apart, isn't mm-hmm. it? Exactly. Oh. And so the whole like car crash at the end, yeah. that's kind of like a big old metaphor for, you know, it's, it's over. Like you just completely crashed and burned. And you, you still want to be together in a way, but you know you can't because it's just like you lost that spark, you know. And so that's kind of what that represents. Okay. Um, and yeah, we weren't actually in the car during that. People were like, were you guys? And we're like, nah, no. No we- humans were harmed during the making of this video. <laughs> actually, I tell people that we were in the car at first, but then I, I'm, I'm too nice. Everyone's to, like, like oh, no, please. No, yeah, there was like Jay, this, are you there was okay? Stunt driver. The stunt driver, actually, though. He was, was so scared. It was his first time ever doing this. I was like nervous this. for him. He had, oh, no, that's the worst. If he's nervous. He was like, I've never actually done this. He, he had like supervised people before. So. He had seen people okay. do it, but he had never actually done it himself. And it was scary because he actually went in the water and nobody got any like signal from him for like 15 seconds, 20 seconds. We're all watching from the shore, like ready like, to run. it's like 1 a.m. It's like it's 30 cold, degrees at 1 a.m., yeah. Dark. And we were just like all scared. We were all thinking the worst. Like, yo, this dude hit his head, mm-hmm. like got knocked out or something. Because it was like a really, really big impact. Like the water shot like 50 feet in the air. Is And eventually we saw his like hand come out and we all like, you know, regained our breath and we're like, oh, thank God. The drama. But yeah, it was crazy. That was one of the most. Don't know what fun you got to look on. It made me really appreciate the stunt man even more. What right? a great guy! No, he's the man. I think we doubled his pay for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the 
the risk assessment. Um, so you were saying that you had, there's five songs, you had four of them kind of already done, percolating. What, did you have the intentions of putting them on just an EP? Because you were independent at this stage, mm-hmm. right, when you were yeah. writing this music. Yeah, well, we kind of created... We released this independent too. Uh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. We created the first four songs 100% independently, mm-hmm. um, except for actually one song, this was all pre-manager too, right? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. One, Distraction is the one song that our manager actually helped us create. But before like linked that, us with it, people, was, yeah. it was Fallen, Last Thing, and Hurt People. And those songs are like a year and a half old at this point. And that we just made, just Jack and I know. Like, it wasn't like a contrived, like, this is how, this is all going to go into a project. And it just kind of flowed into that. And it happened, mm-hmm. and now it's gone. But it's just like, I don't think it was ever really... Well, it's there, but it's gone. Yeah, it's no, it's right. I was like, it's gone. (laughs) No, now it is gone. The whole thing is gone. Gone. (laughs) It was never, yeah, it was never a whole idea, I guess. But I'm glad it came together the way it did. Yeah, and we actually like were intending to put out like a singles. Like, why were you sitting on the three songs then that you had, and then you're like the fourth one came. We had like 30, 40. We still have like so many songs that we haven't released. And so we found like these ones from the batch like kind of felt like they went together, and were the more emotional ones, the ones that were more about relationships. And we were actually planning on releasing like just an 18 song project. Like we were gonna throw out so many songs. Wow. And and I know like the fans would have loved that. It would have been awesome, yeah. but <laughs> but like we we wanted to make sure what we put out was right. And we still have all those songs. You know, yeah. we still mind. yeah we got to pay attention to like what is what's going on right now. Not only just like with our fans, but in the music industry. You know, it's not mm-hmm. really like an album driven market right now. It's it's more people are just buying singles and yeah right. Dropping. Calvin Harris is dropping a single every mm-hmm. two weeks. You know, it's just like people. Things have changed, and social media is a huge part of that. And that's yeah, and attention came span is less and less every day, you know. And so exactly. we want to make sure people can consume our uh, consume our music, but not get bored at the same time, you know. Yeah. Because like it's, it's rare for somebody to listen to an, through an entire eighteen song project front to finish, but with this five song project, it's quick. It's twenty minutes, you know. You can digestible. get through it like that. It's digestible. Yeah. Exactly. Um. Why do you call it gone? Because you know, usually with albums, sometimes there's a title track or there's a song that's after the name. Why did you decide to call it that? Do we ever talk about what? Well. This is the thing. We were going to call it Feels for the longest yeah. time. It was Feels for like six that. months. Wait, is this an exclusive? It was called It was called Feels. What? Like this all was ready to go and it just said Feels it's right feels. here. Yeah. Okay. And then what it was literally a last minute decision to flip and it. And our creative director, Emil Nava, who shot the video, also works like very closely with Calvin Harris. Yeah, he does like all his videos and whatnot. He was, so like, he was like, Calvin's coming out with a song called Feels. I'm shooting it. So that was not like uh, that. wasn't the main one. Our song only. Feels also. Exactly. And then our There's friend. There's a lot of Feels going around the place already. No, and yeah. we weren't the Bozzi first. Like we've seen it out there. You know, I've seen it like on a t-shirt and I was like, okay, that's a dope name. But it wasn't completely original. You know, it wasn't 100 percent Yeah, and it kind of was an outdated word at that point point too like being in your feels has been around for so long <laughs> at this so point 26 you know day. social media just played it out and so we were like yo let's just call it gone and gone meaning like what you once had is now gone you know it's okay. kind of like the resolution word i guess for the entire project so yeah and so you're signed to island records now mm-hmm. when did this happen and was this released under that label this what mm. it is underneath them yeah because okay. it says island records but like yeah. we it was going out regardless of wi- whether we were with him at yeah. the time or not. They just happened, we happened to sign our deal like right before it came out, you know? I think it literally happened like the day that this yeah, came right? out. Like, we, I remember Adam, our manager came in to our house and we like signed the deal on the kitchen counter, like barely awake, but <laughs> we had obviously made sure all the points were right. Yeah. But um, I, yeah, it happened like the same day almost, like the same week for sure. Yeah, and they're out. just like, honestly, nothing but great things to say about Island, man. They the dopest team. David like, Massey, Ziggy. I, yeah, I know they're really just going to help us bring our vision to the next level and really expand our vision, you know? Yeah. But what was that like for you guys? Because, I mean, you've been right, you've been friends for how many years? Since kindergarten. 16, so, 16 like, years. So, like, what, yeah. like 16 years? Mm-hmm. Aww. Stop. A whole stop. new meaning of ride or die. <laughs> um. And like, so when, I'm curious, like, when was the first time that you guys were like, yo, you're actually talented, where you were like, I can rap, and you discovered that you could sing, well, and it, then you could do it together? Because like, obviously you were doing it in the shower, by yourself, whatever it was. And yeah. When so, did I mean, that happen and how? I know I can speak for G, like, you were in show choir growing up. And yes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my, I had two older <laughs> sisters. I never had a brother. I wasn't like, I could have totally gone the sport route, but I went like the drama theater yeah. type thing, because I had two sisters. Yeah. And... I loved it, to be honest. I loved it. I didn't want to say that. He couldn't have gone a sport route. Chill, bro. I could have been like, no. No, but. (laughs) He's got hops, though. I'll give him Regardless, regardless, it happened this way. And I I always was so happy that it was happening this way. But deep, 
deep down I was so happy, but on the surface I would act like, oh, I wish I was on the football team because yeah. like all my she was on the varsity soccer team and and my buddy Sam was on varsity basketball and Luke you probably Bates let people was, get to you too. You know, it <laughs> wasn't necessarily cool to be in show choir. Like of in course America. not. Yeah, well, who has the last laugh now? You exactly. Well, yeah, it, was, it was process. It was a long term plan. It was, but I also I can say like when I first found out that Jack J was rapping, I was like, like most people's reaction to a four foot three white 12 year old <laughs> rapping <laughs> it's just like what are you doing dude like you you have a four oh like maybe like hit the books harder and go to stanford or something like it's very out of place for, for sure. you and no i was definitely like very self-conscious about that too but i feel i like. would say that's the reason he was so self-conscious because like all of our big jock friends who were playing varsity football games on friday nights were making mm-hmm. fun of him even though it was a joke i kind of felt like I'm not going to say that I, I like knew he could be, um, you know, a rapper to sell a million singles, but I, I saw something in him. I know I did, and I know that we kind of had that mutual respect for each other. Even though I was getting shit for being in show choir and he was getting shit for writing freestyles, it was kind of like, okay, I see you. I see what you're doing. Like I know that maybe one day it could go there. I don't think we ever thought like, oh, we're gonna have. Yeah, fans. I know we always like, wanted to make music like. Always, like, yeah. since the beginning of time, like, in sixth grade, I know some of y'all might have seen these videos, like, we're making parodies to songs. Yeah, I've that... heard all about these. Okay, yeah, you, you know, I don't need to explain anymore. But, like, they're all over YouTube, and, like, you know, they're going to haunt us forever. I'm, I'm, I'm going to embrace it. But, uh, <laughs> basically, it got to the point where we, we were getting this following, you know, on, on the Vine application. And, it, if anything, I think our fans really gave us confidence uh, to go and seek out, like, a real professional recording studio and... Actually, it wasn't even a professional recording studio. Our first four songs were just made with some guys who reached out to us in the city. Because, like, we had no idea where to even record. Like, how to even go about making a track, you know? We love making music, but we didn't know how to, like, make music. Yeah, yeah Omaha, sense. Nebraska, like, where do you where do you go? Like, who knows what to There's do? There's no, like, scene there, really. No. But then these kids reached out to us. They, they helped us with our first four singles. And, like, the fans, we got to give it up to them. Because I'm, like, honestly, like, the songs are cool. Like, we could have done much better. I listened to my delivery back then, <laughs> and I'm, like, I just cringe. Because I'm, like, wow, this kid is not confident in himself at all. Like, But that's the thing is, like, even as low as our confidence was, it was so much lower before we had all of these people supporting us and like telling us that we could actually like do this yeah so i would say like that's the reason that it actually happened we would have never just came out of omaha nebraska with no one telling us to like go follow your dreams if we didn't have those people yeah, telling we us just would have gotten it. like so much shit and like ran out. yeah it, it just would have like it would have been so much harder without our fans by our side you know and yeah. and they really i think gave us um that motivation and that drive and regardless of how like i think the songs are that we put out back in the day like they still bought them and they still showed love and and so, thank you to you guys, <laughs> your real ones. So OG reading. fans here right now. Yeah, and now it's great, do. though, because, like, we're really, like, fully confident in everything we say on the mic, you know, every yeah. every word I'm rapping, like, I, I'm fully into it, you know? Like, I'm not, like, timid, I'm not holding it back. So, yeah, I think it's, like, really just been a great progression since then. What's the freestyle process like, though? Because, I mean, it must be, like, a key to almost unlocking and not overthinking. So oh, how yeah, that's, it, his, that's him, yeah. 100%. Well, does it go down? I can like, try, but, but see, no, like, <laughs> I know you're the singer. You're the rapper. Well, on no, top no, of no. that, though, like, a lot of the, a lot of the ways we come up with our hooks and, uh, like, it's, it's just Jack G going into the booth and just, like, singing what's on his mind to the yeah. beat, like, first time hearing the beat, you know, and just, like, singing melodies. And then if we get a nice melody, we're like, ooh, that was a cool melody. We'll go and add some words to it, you know? And so, if anything, like, he's he freestyles more than I do in terms of, like, making our songs. I freestyle, like, more melodies. I'm not, like, yeah. okay, I yeah, don't make yeah. sense. You know, like, I'll be yeah. speaking, like, gibberish, but... It'll be amazing. Like the melody will make you feel some type of way, yeah. and then his, his, his. <laughs> his but yeah, like uh, as much as I like to freestyle, though, like if I'm doing something on a song, it's I, I tediously write out every word and make sure the flow is perfect. And like, okay. I'm a very, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to my but words, like, you know. So on any given Friday night at our house, like he will you destroy anybody go. in a rap. No, yeah. yeah. So it's like it's so a whole different vibe, though, you know. What's the technique, though? Like, is it like you pick a, obviously you pick a word, have a beat, and then you is there like. A lot that comes into terms with like not overthinking it, because I would imagine there is, because clearly you're very articulate, but your brain has to be like a few steps ahead at all times. Right? No, of course, yeah, and like like the way I look at you when you're freestyling is like it's mindless. <laughs> like you're just like what a you problem. just go, you just go. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, like that's why he can't freestyle like in front of a bunch of people right now because obviously we we know that we have some younger fans and we don't want to make them feel isolated and something might slip out of his mouth that it's oh I say some hear. terrible oh. terrible things when I'm so yeah. that's you know <laughs> like not not so we like won't ask I'm not talking about like murdering people or anything but like you know what I'm saying yeah. like it just isn't appropriate in certain instances that's why I feel like we he or I especially not me but he specifically won't freestyle 
Uh, you but will. Like, I will. You but will, like, and you can make it clean. But it's not as good because you can tell he's thinking about making yeah. it clean, and he's not I, like really... myself. When I, right. But no, no, no. I love to like just honestly, even this weekend, like in front of Nico's dad. <laughs> uh, nothing. Never mind. It's I'm like even... an insider joke. <laughs> Who's Nico, and what happened in front of Nico's dad? He's just he's our friend in Canada, and his dad like. I was just like freestyling for him for like hours and just yeah it was just funny because yeah. like I, I, I don't know he was just mind blown because he's just he doesn't know anything about hip hop or anything it was just funny. <laughs> he's yeah. just like a Canadian guy and he's just you know I had to educate him a little bit. Surely you re- you learned this script off. <laughs> <laughs> I love Nico. He's, yeah, he's good, good times. Good guy, yeah. So tell us the story then about the first time. How old you were when you both performed together? Not yeah. on stage, just when you're about. We're like, let's oh. see what go- where this uh, goes. Well, I mean. Like I know Jack. I mean, we were, perfor- we were performing YouTube in front of yeah, stuff. in front of his MacBook. Yeah, like we were getting into it too. Like, <laughs> dude, like, like too into it. <laughs> <laughs> Remember like Apple Store can I and shit? No, of course, yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, like we were like really performing, even though like you said, it wasn't on a stage in front of anybody, even yeah. like five people. But it was just the fact that we could see ourselves on the camera and we knew that this Viewers, would be uploaded yeah. someday is like that that's how we first so i'd say first started performing like fourth grade but actually the <laughs> first time we like really i mean he was in show choir obviously right mm-hmm. first time we had like a joint performance i guess was a uh, and this wasn't even like we weren't even singing or nothing this was i was just showing a uh, bruiser our bodyguard actually wherever bruiser's at i was just showing oh, him talking about- where's bruiser oh bruiser with the tour mark. yeah bruiser. so like Which we will talk about i don't know if you yes. know what powder puff football is it's like a oh now you're exposing it's like, me what it's like where this? the girls it's like where the girls uh play against each other in the junior and senior class so they play flag football against each other and then we have powder buff where the guys play volleyball and like so during and, the girls halftime, game halftime. during the girls game the guys will do halftime the halftime dance that the girls oh. would normally do what and so do? so it's all backwards right yeah, 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 yeah and so jack and i like we got our group of friends and we like completely like in-house choreographed our dance in and it's just like the funniest. We, I was just showing it to him, and it just makes me laugh. But like, that was a performance, man. Yeah. There was like a thousand people. Yeah, like, just like so many people there watching, and like we were like, "Yo, like what an exhilarating feeling!" Just performing in front of that many people. Yeah. He had probably already felt it before because right. you know the whole show choir thing. But even though we didn't know what our future would hold in the next four years from that moment, we we knew after we got off that field. Even though it was a complete yes. joke, like we felt that feeling. Of like, you know, we love being on stage entertaining people making them laugh making them cry whatever it is you know we just want to make people feel things and then i think our first real performance was like in chicago like where we actually did our own originals yeah 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 like way back in the day and it was just like so cringy yo like oh my god no but you think it's cringy like everyone you would think it's cringy well what happened and it wasn't even cringe cringe? it was was like literally my hand miss calls and ignorant like Like, it would be like I, i nobody we didn't know how to be ourselves on stage because yeah. that was our first time, you know. And, I, and it was like kind of scary because we jumped straight, like we we skipped so many steps. I feel like we jumped straight into performing in front of like thousands yeah. of people. Yeah. When like the yeah, and like a lot of artists on the come up, like you know they they grind in a different way. You know, like they play these small little club venues, the open mic nights, and like that's how they get their come up, which is like so dope. And like a part of me wishes like that was how we did come up, but now that we've had we have like 300 400 500 plus shows under our belts. Yeah. So I just feel fully confident. And it's we had to start somewhere. Hour is real. You're pros. Mm-hmm. Um, can we get Bru- Bruiser up on stage? I want to yeah, ask about quick, the tour Hop up here. Bruiser. Hop up Bruiser. Bruiser. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you see the merch too, right? Yeah. That's why. Hey, give him, give so, him a little look. He's our in-house supermodel. You see the merch? Yes. Yeah, so talk to me. Can you believe that, gee, your your dad designed this, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, well we had someone yeah, designing. I, I thought he was messing, but apparently it's true. Okay, so we had the roses. And I'm not taking any credit away from my dad. I don't know where you, Dad, I love you. But so we had the roses, <laughs> and we had the gone font, obviously. And then it was two days before our first pop-up, I think, in Boston. And maybe. we're like, shit, we don't we're have like, any wait, merch. Wait, bro, wait, we should have merch. Yeah. <laughs> and so we took this, and we were like, okay, let's just throw that on a shirt, and it'll be cool. Like, whatever, maybe. I don't know. And then his dad just surprised us. Like, nah, the show. Like, let's put Rose. And he didn't even tell us. He just sent him. And then Bruiser was wearing that. He walks into the green room. He's like, "What's up, boys?" And we were like, <laughs> "Wow, the grand reveal!" <laughs> and so, did your dad know there was like five songs on the EP? And it yeah, was, was it his idea to do the five different roses? No, no, no. No, that see, was our, uh, you our had idea. The rose yeah. tattoo. We had like yeah. the kind of see. He actually got that after we we obviously because now it means something to him. Before yeah. it was just a rose. But, but no, yeah. we were like we were it's actually just a twin- really big Beauty and the Beast fan, guys. That, yes, there you go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's M O S. But we were toying around with the idea of like like how do we show this cycle of a relationship visually? Um, and and then uh, we were just in a room one day and, and we wanted to be like, like simple, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I, like, I was like, what if a rose just like grows and dies? And then our director Emil, um, 
hit, uh, had his graphic guy. He's like, oh, I like that idea. We could really do something with it. And then we just kind of ran with that. And uh, Once we saw the graphics of the roses, we were like, We're like, it's no brainer. Like, stuff. it makes so much sense, and it just symbolizes the whole project so perfectly. And yeah. so I got the first rose tattooed on me, which is the distraction rose. Um, cause like it's the one that's still growing and like, I feel like I'm always growing and always, yeah. you know, learning yeah. every day and you know, I'm never going to hit my peak. I feel like hopefully mm-hmm. you won't, fingers crossed. you won't, but yeah, that is the limit. That was the there first thing I noticed when I walked in, I was like, the tour merch is amazing. Right? It's, it's sick. It's sick. It's dope. But <laughs> there will be, you know, like when we're actually on, I mean, this is a great shirt. I think Bruce is going to be on our website 2X. too as the model. You feel me? Like it's gotta be a two. on the back, we do twirl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got a little, that's Jackie's the new logo too. Love it. Love it. Let's all give a big round of applause for Bruiser, our model. Thank you, Bruiser. I feel like we're on one of those morning shows. Um, So now that you're signed to Ireland, you're touring, you're performing tomorrow. Thursday, isn't it? Thursday. Thursday, yeah. 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 Um, Tell us what the plan is now and how things are going to change now that you have a label. Well, I think, obviously, we have a strategy in place that we're working towards right now. I don't want to say anything. Well, because Jay, you tweeted well, new music. Yes, new music. Soon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a given. We we are definitely coming out with new music. Honestly, though, I don't want people to like, get the idea that things are going to change, though. Like, yeah. Because yeah. it's like, we're never going to put out music that Jack and I don't like and that we don't think our fans will like. And it's never going to be something where the label comes in and just takes control like that. Yeah. You know, it's going to be us making the music at the end of the day. And, and they're just going to help, I guess, guide and enhance our vision. So Yeah, like we're still in the studio with people that we were in the studio with before we signed. And then, of course, we're with people that the label have brought us to to try to get a certain type of song. But we're never going to put out a song that's just like this is a radio hit. Like, no, we, yeah. we want to make sure that it's like I love Magic. it and Jay loves it. Mm-hmm. And like that's all that matters. And of course. From there, I mean, obviously, if we have success, that'll be amazing. But as long as, like, we're happy and our fans are happy with the stuff that we're giving them, that's all that matters. But I would say right now, we're really focused on putting out a single in the next month. A couple singles, yeah. yeah. What was what was inspired by 13 Reasons Why? I also saw oh, yeah, a you about that? that. Yeah. What'd you say? Um, I, I just said we wrote a song. You don't read his Twitter okay. feed? <laughs> okay. I mean, <laughs> I, do, I don't even read my Twitter password. Definitely doesn't read my Twitter feed. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I don't even think he knows his you. password, to be honest. Well, no, think. okay. I was, like, hacked the other day and, like... So many Didn't people even were like, oh, yeah, you're really? hacked. I was like, uh. but <laughs> the point is, they. I never got my password once my whole team fixed it, so I okay. got. I got to figure it out. So that's your excuse for, for not for not tweeting. It, well, no, I wouldn't have tweeted anyways. But <laughs> I would. <laughs> Good you had an excuse. Maybe I would have seen his tweet. If, yeah. If, he's if he's an Instagram guy. You know, I get it. I'll I'm just... not either. Um, No, I'm really, I'm on him though. I'm telling him so. I'm like, tweet. No, bro. he is. It's not You know fault. they want it. It's you my know, fault. Give the people what... <laughs> Um, but yeah, so back to that song though. Uh, I mean, we just finished watching that series, and like, that, I, I know you guys have probably all seen it. It's like such a imp- yeah. it's such an impactful show, and it has like such a serious message behind it. Yeah. And I feel like, I feel like that's like honestly is such a real problem in today's age. You know, like people getting depressed to the point where like up to the point of no return. You know. Yeah. And and it's sad because. Because, like, I've talked to fans specifically about this, you know, like, in person, just about their stories going through shit like this. And I don't know. I felt like it was it was time for Jack and I to put out a song that, like, means more than just, like, something about with a girl or, like, a love song or, like, yeah. you know, something that's more impactful. We had this old yeah. song called Tides. And, like, that was one... <laughs> That was one of these songs that, like, all the like, so many of our fans got like lyrics tattooed on them, yeah. and like, yeah. and we would go overseas like thousands and thousands of miles away, and that's when it really like impacted Jack and, and I. And just like see girls see in the crowd that. crying when we would play that, and it's it got, like we were like, yo, we need the tides part too, and but this one is like really tells a specific story about a girl. It's like based on Hannah Baker loosely, yeah. But it's like loosely, yeah. It's not necessarily all about, but it, it is the concept that I feel like a lot of people go through. Like Jack saying is like high school is not an easy place, and that's yeah. pretty much what the song talks about. And I feel like anybody who has watched that show or even just been in high school would just appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And when do you think we're going to get to hear that? Um, that's probably going to be one of the first few singles we put out. We're getting that yeah. mixed right now. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I can't so promise anything. Yeah, I want to say We can't do any spoilers. Yeah. And um, there's one quote that I kept reading that I'm just really curious about the story behind it is that Timberland called you guys the future. Timberland. So Timberland's the man. Yeah. What happened man. there? He is the man. He, uh, we we still work out with him like a couple days a week. We see him. He works just coincidentally. He's, he works out at the gym. gym. But he uh, did he say that we're the future? That's oh, yeah. what I read. <laughs> just go with it. No, he's the man. He's like obviously such a legend. Anybody who is involved in the music industry or even just likes music and grew up around like '90s time knows Timbaland. You know, like yeah. he has hits on the radio. But 
working with him was really special, obviously, for that reason. You know, before we were in the music industry, I knew the name. I saw it. I, I always would, like, like, you know, I would see it with Timberlake. I was always confused, like, is yeah, yeah, yeah. Timberland? I would, like, I really didn't know if he was, like, his own person or anything. But then, of course, we met him in These person. These are shoes, right? I put them I put. But, them I mean, together. you can't forget, you know, Promiscuous yeah. Girl, you know. <laughs> Promiscuous? Yeah, of course. Like, I knew the yeah. voice. I was like, who is this guy? He's, like, a monster, like, sounding man. But, yeah, we just met up with him, like, one day. Uh, our, our old attorney, like, linked us up. Yeah. And... And he really liked the fact that we are independent, um, and because like it makes everything so much easier for him. He was saying as a producer, when like there's not the middleman involved, and so we just got in the studio for a few weeks and ended up making some songs with him. We we actually got him in a big old Versace robe on a roof for our all weekend long music video. And nah, he's 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 a man, really. Good he's guy. a man, yeah. He's always been like super cooperative and just awesome. And anytime we're with him, it's a good time. So yeah. And can you tell us of any producers or artists that you're working with now? Uh, I mean, yeah. whoa, whoa, yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we, know Sean, well, we know Sean Mendes, who is now a label mate. He is a label, label mate. Yeah. He's, he's on the wish list. We, Sean's the man. There's this one song. But <laughs> I can't say it. Though. Yeah, no, Sean's the man. That's mm -hmm. that's Sean's the man. Um, what I say. Yeah, yeah. There, there's so much that well, we could say. say something, no, you wasn't. I, I just like I anything. don't like. There's nothing. Nothing is for sure. And especially, you know, of course, when you sign to a label. You don't give them all the control, but you do give up a little bit of control. So at the end of the day, we don't really know for sure. Collaboration. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and it's it's everybody kind of has a say. And obviously, we're not going to release anything that we don't like. But but there's definitely, like, things in the works. That yeah. I just, we really just can't, like, okay. I don't know. I don't want to give Yeah, up it's just like, we don't want to. I mean, yeah. We'll be watching out. Please, but, uh, please. No, seriously, watch. It'll be on our radar. <laughs> okay, You're welcome. Okay. I think we have some audience questions. That's good. I'm sure we do. Yeah. Girls? Hey. Oh. What's going on? How you doing? Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's, What's up? Purple. <laughs> the one, the one guy. Guys in here. Just yeah, that one, one guy. What's your name? Two, man? three. Hi, guys. Four, uh, four my guys. name is Randy, by the way. Um, Randy, my man. Nah, nice to meet you. You too. Um, so, how was it easy for you two to transition into music after the, your, uh, the years being on Vine? Um. Yeah, honestly, like, the transition... I don't even think about it being a transition. It just like our fans were commenting on these like little six second music covers that we would put out in the mix of our comedy videos. And they would be like, yo, make some originals, make some originals. And it just kind of started happening. And then of course, you know, Vine just got, you know, the knife in its back one day. And, but we had already stopped making Vine so long before that. Like we were already completely focused on the music. And I think our comedy is shown in different ways now, you know, through like, you know, live interviews and through like our Snapchats and whatnot. And so, and so we never like want to lose that aspect of what made people love us in the first place. Right. But music really is like the, the deep down passion in Jack mm -hmm. and I. And I think it took us making these first few songs and it took us uh, seeing the fan reaction to them to really realize that, you know, fully realize that. So you don't miss Vine. Uh, honestly, dude, actually, the other just day, just another app to not worry about. More room on your phone. We don't like miss it, but the other day I was like, dude, that would be such a funny vine. And like, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Actually. You can do loops on Snapchat now, can't uh, you? The one in the airport, Something like that. Where it's like, do you have a canoe? Uh, remember? <laughs> like, I have no idea. Wow, this is how the process works, guys. I would know Watch if it wasn't like masterminds. Yeah. Okay, next question. Hello, Hi. what's your name? Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Hello, Melissa. Nice to meet you guys. Um, since nice you can't talk. You about like who you're collaborating with now. Yeah. Is there anybody that you want to collaborate with? Ooh, um, I mean, absolutely. Uh, uh, endless. Our, our buddy Khalid, are you guys Khalid fans? He's Khalid, the man. yes! Um, like, I really, I really want to do something with him. Um, we haven't gotten in the studio yet, but like, so he's a good guy. So you guys hang out in LA, do you? Well, yeah, that was, that's the funniest story, dude. Like, the way we met Khalid. And like, in your room, you're playing him our music. He's like, oh, that's dope, that's dope. And we were like, Sent do you have any music? And he's like, he's like, oh, yeah, I got this one song. It's so weird, yo. And he <laughs> starts playing, send me. No. Yo. And we're like, bro, this is you? And this like was before, like, really, <laughs> this was before, like, really, really popped. And yeah. so then, and so then uh, like, it's so weird, because I'd never heard it before he played it for me that night. And then every single day, like, six Everywhere. times a day, I started hearing it. And I was like, oh, my God, the, w the universe is weird. But um, <laughs> Anderson Pac Anderson is amazing. amazing. He's, like, my favorite. Uh, in terms of rappers, like like uh, uh, Andre 3000. I know he doesn't. Andre 3 says. Wish spoken. He doesn't do like anyone. many features anymore. He's very like picky with what he does. Yeah. But like he has just got the craziest flow, and he's such an influential, just like icon in the hip hop game. Russ so, like, is someone who's popping right now, and like Russ is he's awesome. very new. But that's someone that we've been supporting for like two years now. So like right. I would love. I mean, I know that we would have 
an amazing time in the of studio. Course. Obviously, like our, our boy um, Sean, we would love to. Like we have very different musical ooh. styles, but like I feel like we could find a cool like hybrid. Skip song Marley. We can make a sick song with Skip Marley. He's yeah. So, he's, he's really. We saw so him bad. actually at his at his uh, Los Angeles pop up show, and he's he's a label mate of ours, and he's just like crazy. He's like a young Bob Marley on stage. Yeah. And we're such big reggae music fans, so like any way we can, I guess, dabble in that in that kind of uh, in that kind of genre, like it, it was it's fun for us, you know. Because it's not necessarily like what you would expect us to make, but like yeah. that was the majority of what we listened to growing up in high school was just reggae and like the concerts we would go to were all reggae concerts. And I mean, you know. genres are all like coming together anyway yeah, these exactly. days. That there's no you can merge lines. anything these days. Yeah. There, you can hybridize anything, and I feel like you can everything's so open ended. So it's there's so many people though. Really, like anybody who's just killing it and like I respect, I would love to work yeah. with. So nice. What's good? I think we have one more question. Hi, thank you for being here. Hello, thank you for being here. Thanks for coming. You're real. Um, so uh, my question for you is, you know, uh, music is definitely such a rewarding but such a difficult kind of thing to get involved in. Um, so what was maybe the biggest lesson that you took away from getting involved in music? The Good biggest question. lesson that I've learned thus far from getting involved in the music industry. Patience. Just in, yeah, pa well, patience is actually, yeah, it's a huge Literally, thing. it's patience. Because... You know how people on social media every day, like, when's the next stuff coming out? They're, they're begging you to put it out. And I used to be so bad with this. I used to, like, just tease stuff. And I, I still do screw up quite a bit. But, like, I used to tease stuff, like, put release dates out there that weren't real, set in stone yet. Just because, like, I really genuinely thought that was going to be... These girls are all like, you remember <laughs> yeah, that Yeah, we time? know, we know. She's I'm holding dead. the grudge. She's holding the grudge over here. But no. <laughs> no, but I'm telling you, like... I really, I love you too. I really like would think something was coming out and then something would happen. Yeah. A curveball would get thrown in and it just wouldn't happen that way. And so. But that's what happens when, when you don't have like strategy like we do now. Exactly. And I would just be overly excited because you know, I love making music and just yeah. wanted the fans to hear. And so I think I've learned now to like just kind of hold my tongue a little bit and leave some stuff up to just the imagination, you know, and, yeah. not, and not tell them every little detail. I would say there's that side of it. And then there's the whole other side of it. Like, don't get caught up like with. There's so much bullshit, you know, like mm -hmm. especially in like the <laughs> media, the in the in like the public eye yeah. that like just I mean, could be real, could be fake. But it's just like people I see just get super caught up. And I would say that that's just something to avoid. To stay centered, true mm -hmm. to who you yes. are. Stay true to your roots. Yeah. Know? How do you deal with stress? I saw you tweeted about stress recently. <laughs> what did you tweet, bro? Um, he said he lost like six pounds. Oh, yeah. I was remember I was 122 <laughs> and I was 128 the week. Oh, Just okay. So he it. lost six. But we're trying to gain weight, and yeah. he lost six. <laughs> he lost six pounds over the weekend. He was stressed. He I was don't really know how I deal with. I don't think I'm really good at dealing with stress, honestly. I just, like, like I don't know. You know, this weekend I was kind of just in a funk all weekend. Yeah, like, no, these past couple not weeks. Not getting much sleep. Very stressful, but I would say it's not something we're used to. We're not used to being stressed, but now we're getting back to, like, the no worries, Jack and Jack. Yeah, yeah and... Well, that's all we have time for on that note. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. so much. You were great. You. Thank you guys for Thank coming. You guys, you guys are amazing. Everything. We're very excited.